as labor market data disappoints. He says 50 basis points rate cut back on the cards. Welcome to Market Insight. I'm Ludovica Brignola. U.S. private employers hired the fewest number of workers in three and a half years in August, and data for the prior month was revised lower, potentially hinting at a sharp labor market slowdown. However, layoffs remain low, helping to allay fears that the labor market was deteriorating. What does this all mean for the upcoming Fed's rate cut? Well, joining me now to talk about all that is Russ Mould, Investment Research Director at AJ Bell. Thank you for being with us today. Russ, what do you make of the labour market data that we've seen today? I mean, they're certainly giving markets plenty to think about. They've been concerned since really July when markets first began to lose momentum about weakness in the US economy as reflected in the jobs market. We've seen that in the ADP payrolls number. We've seen it in the job openings number, its lowest level since Q1 2021. And the vacancies to unemployment ratio is now down almost to one, having been two at one stage at its peak. So plenty to suggest there is weakness. But don't forget, this is lagging data reflecting decisions probably taken three or six months ago by employers. If you're looking for encouragement, the weekly initial claims number at 227,000 isn't anything to worry about. If it goes above, say, 300,000 a week, then there is something to worry about. And does this mean then that a 50 basis point rate cut is back on the cards for later this month? Yeah, I've just had a quick check at the CME FedWatch service online, and that's now showing a 40% chance of a 50 basis point cut at the meeting on the 18th of September. So, it, it, you know, clearly somebody somewhere is getting worried. I guess then we may need to be a little bit careful what we wish for. I think there was a piece from Deutsche Bank this week showing that when the Fed does cut by 50 basis points, or does it away from a scheduled meeting, there's normally trouble ahead. Right, and then uh, the closely watched NFP is coming out tomorrow. What are your expectations, Russ? But also, after the big revision that we saw, how reliable really is all this market data, given that it will be indeed revised? Yeah, I think we mustn't be guilty of getting hung up on, on one month or two month set of figures. As you said, the, the Bureau for Labour Statistics put through an enormous revision to the last 12 months numbers, knocked off about a quarter of the jobs they initially thought had been created. In terms of this month's number, though, I think the consensus is about 165,000. That's up from last month, but below the last 12 months average. So again, suggestive of a bit of a slowdown. I think rather than the monthly number, I think you're right to focus on the trend in revisions. And I think in the last 18 months, 15 have been down on a monthly basis. That is, again, perhaps indicative of a slowdown in the cooling in the US market, as of course is the overall increase in unemployment from 34 to 4.3%. Right, and in recent weeks, all eyes have really been on the job market. What about inflation? I mean, is the disinflationary trend still intact? And Mr. Powell, the, the chair of the Federal Reserve, his language at the Jackson Hole Wyoming uh, symposium in August was seemed pretty relaxed about inflation, even if the consumer price index at 2.9% and the personal consumer expenditure index at 25 are above target. The trends still seem to be his friend. And I think that's why he was much more strident in his tone about sanctioning a rate cut at this meeting in September. So it seems as if central banks think they have inflation under control and their concerns are now moving more towards ensuring there is a soft landing rather than a hard landing in the labour market and the wider economy. Right. One final point on equity markets. I mean, US and UK equity markets have on average done well on a two-year view following the first interest rate cut of a cycle. That's what you say in your notes. Well, what do you expect then for US equity markets, obviously keeping in mind that there will be elections as well? Yeah, and the elections are a big wild card. If you listen to what you know, Vice President Harris and, and candidate Trump have been saying, I mean, you could argue if you wanted to that the, the Harris policies are possibly stagflationary. Uh, tax breaks on some hand, tax increases and supply restraint because of price caps on another. The Trump agenda seems pretty inflationary to me. Cheaper money, tariffs, fewer f fewer immigrants. So that is definitely something the Fed will have to think about. But for the candidates, saying something and getting it done and through the House of Representatives and Senate are different things entirely. The Fed will be watching that for sure. Politics are a complication. But overall, at the moment, I think it's jobs that seem to be the main concern. And as you say, the market's got a track record of running up strongly into a rate cut, having a pause and making sure it's getting that rate cut because it's a victory over inflation rather than a recession. The two outliers to those average numbers, 2001 to 3, 2007 to 9, A, you'd had a massive run up in equities and valuations were pretty high, and B, you ended up with a big economic slowdown or recession. 
not a soft landing. So it, it, that's the risk that we're facing. And that's almost why, again, markets are getting a bit edgy. Why are we getting the rate cut? Is it good news in inflation or bad news on the economy? Very, very good analysis. Thank you very much, Russ Mall from AJ Bell. And that is Market Insight. Don't forget you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.